So we got quite a few people here today. And we're all here for the same purpose, 92 participants. What I'm going to do today is run through a presentation. Within the presentation, we have information about all kinds of wonderful fun things relating to remote mode, which is going to be very useful for anyone who is incorporating remote into their own practices for their self-healing. I personally use remotes a lot. I've currently got three of them going at once at the same time. One for detox, one molecular weight substance, and also a killing chain for candida, mold, and yeast, which is going to be useful considering my various conditions. And the next question is, what is remote? How does it work? In what way can we use it? In what way is it a useful tool? Are there any limitations to what remote can provide? Should we be using other methods uh, on top of remote and so on and so forth? So hopefully we're going to be able to cover all of that stuff in a relatively short space of time. And there is plenty of room for questions and answers afterwards. And of course, we're being supported by the Spooky2 team as well. So if there's any questions that you've got, which I'm not quite answering to your satisfaction, you know, that's okay. There's someone else here on, uh, on, on the team who can also provide some extra support and assistance. It's now bang on 4 p.m. my time, which means that this is time I clicked the share screen button. And we start going straight on with the presentation. So what are we talking about here? Spooky2. Spooky2 is the company, the primary company, which provides us with the rife frequency therapy technology that we all love. Okay. Uh, Spooky2 is pretty amazing. So what are we going to cover in this presentation? And what do we need to know if we're going to use remote properly and efficiently and effectively? Here we go. What it does. What's the uses of Spooky2 Remote? What is the setup method? Because when you buy your kit, you may look into it and have a bit of a heart attack and think like, this is getting too complicated for me. And then you load up the software. And again, you think this is getting too complicated for me. My job here is to make it simple. So it won't be daunting. And it will be easy for you to get your head around. Seriously, the more presentations and videos that you watch, the more your uh, thought processes will get into alignment with the technology, and you'll be able to use it in a very easy way. I've known people who struggled amazingly with it, but also managed to like become complete rock stars in terms of their understanding and in terms of their usage and also their self-healing journey. So we're also going to take a brief look at the frequency generators, what they're there for, and the advantages of using the remote mode, precautions, and general common questions and answers. Okay, let's put it simple, real simple. Okay, Spooky2 is a system whereby frequencies can be administered to the body using a wide variety of different delivery methods, of which one of them is the remote method. Uh, the actual device itself has within it specially designed coils and magnets. And the combination of the specially designed coils, which are scalar coils, which really does stuff seriously. I've had experiences of it. I know what I'm talking about here. It gives you the ability to deliver frequency therapy to your body from a long way away. It is milder than contact method or plasma, but it's an important key part of the treatment to use remote as well. Some people may just survive purely upon remotes. Other people need remotes plus contact and or plasma. It is the scalar technology which has, been, which has the functionality to be able to deliver the frequency to your body, no matter where you are. So you could literally have your remotes running uh, connected to a laptop somewhere in London. And you could be at a business meeting in Melbourne, Australia, and still get the benefits from it. All right. This, and without any loss of signal, low, no loss of signal strength over the distance. So that's why it's so important. But it is a milder therapy. And we'll get on to the ways in which you can um, get the most benefit from it shortly. With remotes, you have to place a DNA sample, your own DNA sample, or the sample of someone you're trying to treat into the device. There are a few which are listed here on screen. Your fingernails, not the whole nail, just little fingernail clipping, okay? Just 
get out your clippers and clip your nails normally. I tend to clip my fingernails once every two weeks, maybe. That means that I get myself a fresh sample every two weeks on average. And therefore, I can have the frequency delivered to me. The frequency generator, which in this illustration on the left-hand side is the blue XM generator, and on the right-hand side is the generator X generator, will create the frequencies because they'll be connected to your computer <clears throat> and your computer will be running the Spooky2 software, which will inform the generators as to which frequencies, which waveform, and which amplitude should be done for various different output functions. And with the remote, there are specific things we call shells, which enable you to choose the right frequency and amplitude automatically. Oh, sorry, the right amplitude and waveform automatically so that you can then put your frequencies to your body through the remote. We use sticky paper labels or paper masking tape to wrap our DNA samples. And then we place them into the clam shaped remote unit and then change them when required. What DNA samples should we be using? Fingernail clippings are very common. Cheek cells on blotting paper are also quite common. A tiny drop of blood extracted with the help of a diabetic lance can have the, uh, a great effect over four to five days. Different people are going to choose different forms of DNA based upon their circumstances, what they prefer to do. I personally don't like sticking a needle in myself, so I'm less likely to use the, you know, a, a drop of blood. But I have used um, fingernails. I've had you have used hair bulbs. I did actually cut myself once and use some of the blood from that as, as a DNA sample as well. So there's ways in which you can keep your remotes topped up with good, deep, fresh DNA, and therefore keep the signal going to you nice and quickly, uh, nice and efficiently when you're away from the computer. Now the question of how it actually works. It uses the theory of quantum entanglement. And the more you use remotes and you play around with them, you will realize that this theory of quantum entanglement is real because you'll have the experience within your own life that is actually doing something. Uh, I had a very scary experience when I first got my Spooky2 kit. And that is I set it all up properly with um, a laptop I already had in stock. And I chose to run all the scary parasite frequencies just for a giggle because I didn't know if it was going to do anything to me or anything. And I let it go running and I went out and I did some shopping and I went to a cafe. I was a couple of miles away from my house. And all of a sudden I could feel this intense and very uncomfortable thrashing around inside me. In short, the frequencies that I was delivering to my body was actually upsetting parasites in me and they were moving. They were thrashing, they were biting. So that demonstrated to me that number one, that the frequency therapy does actually deliver frequencies to the body from a long way away. And number two, that I unfortunately had those parasites too. So <laughs> and in some respects, it was a eureka moment. I had a moment of discovery about this. But also, I then had to work out, oh dear, my health is even worse than I thought it was. And I had to get busy with treating using contact and remote and plasma in order to improve my well-being. What we can do is to treat our DNA samples, which are directly connected to us, no matter how far away we are from the computer. Okay, no matter how far away. So that's why it's useful and it's convenient and it's beneficial. One thing I will say now is it, the method you use, whether it's contact, plasma or remote, should be based upon the severity of your condition. If your condition is pretty severe, then lots of contact work and lots of plasma work would be in order. But between your sessions, you use remotes to carry on giving you the frequency therapy so your various different pathogens don't carry on uh, expanding and growing. I'm sure you've heard of the theory of doubling time. When you did, uh, when we were in school, we grew yeast and we were told that yeast has a doubling time of 90 minutes. So if you were to half the population of your infection with a plasma session, then between the end of that plasma session and the beginning of the next one, the pathogens can grow back. If you're running remotes, then you're keeping them under the control so that your plasma and your contact sessions work an awful lot better, thus providing you with more recovery. Basic rules for remote use. Uh, the chain of frequency sets needs to be four hours or less because you, over the course of a 24 hour period, that means that your frequencies are being hit more and more and more. 
during that time, which means that the healing effects will be good. Okay, remote mode always repeats the chain. So those frequencies will hit in sequence until you stop the generators. So if you think you need like a three weeks worth of treatment or something like that, you can leave your machine running, leave your laptop running, leave your generators, your generators running for a full three weeks. And, uh, and it will just carry on doing its stuff. Remote mode needs to be run for about a week. Now that depends upon your pathogens, that depends upon how you're reacting to it. Some people take longer, some people take less long. But after a week, you can tell there's probably gonna be some influence and you may be feeling better or you may be feeling different or you may have some evidence that it's actually doing some healing work upon you in one form or another. So you have to be honest with yourself as to how your body is reacting and how your disease condition is reacting as to the duration and what timings you should be using and whether you should be relying exclusively on remotes or using remotes with extra killing power from contacts and plasma. And, you know, depending upon what hardware you've got, if your computer is powerful enough, you can have like loads of generators running off your, your little computer, loads of them. All right, it depends upon what your needs are. Remember, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a qualified medical practitioner. I'm a guy who uses this stuff and is deeply in love with it because of the quantity of good it's done. So now we're gonna have a quick look at setup because when you're thinking about anything to do with Spooky2, you're probably a bit, oh my God, I can't handle this. It's a bit too much for me. So let's try and break it down and go through it step by step. All right, remember this, this video is being recorded. You can go back to it when it'll be on YouTube in a few days time and go over this process. But here we go. One thing I'll point out is you got two terminals on the left hand side of your blue generator, one of which is labeled output one and has a little red flash above it. And the other one is labeled output two. It has a blue flash above it. Okay, those are the two that we use. We don't use these other ones. That's for other forms of technical use, which is not necessarily required for most use of Spooky 2. But it's there in case you are a highly technical person and wants to do highly technical things with your generator. Now you can see here, this is the front of the unit called a boost. And behind it, this front of the boost unit, there are two terminals. And those two terminals fit onto the two terminals on your generator labeled output one and output two. The purpose of this little blue component, sorry, this little black component, is to take the frequencies from both output one and output two and combine it into a single output. So although you've got six different outputs on the outputs of the boost, you'll only be connecting one device to it, which will either be your contacts or your remote or your plasma or your scalar, depending upon what extra technology you're using. But it's only one not two or three, okay? Just one thing has to be connected. And the ports that you can see there, there's one labeled output one, one labeled output two, one labeled higher power contacts, the other one labeled colloidal silver, and you got the BN as well. And the BN one is used for the remotes. And as you can see there, that's me lining up the remote units with the BN uh, connector on the boost unit there uh, prior to assembling it. And that's what it looks like assembled. It's just been screwed in. I know that when it's, when it's new, you might find that a bit fiddly, but you, 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 know, you get used to it. You get into a routine of putting your remotes in and taking your remotes off for various different purposes. Then you just slide it into place so that the uh, output one and output two of the boost is connected to the output one and output two of the generator on that end so that the remote can stick out like that. So if your remote setup looks a bit like that, then all is well, okay? That's what it should look like. Now here you got a picture of me opening the lid and holding my DNA sample there. That's actually a fingernail clipping, which I did prior to going to my Pilates class. And I wrapped it in a paper label and I was about to put it inside. That's all you have to do. So long as the lid closes, you can have as many DNA samples as you can fit in there. So you can actually have one remote unit going and treat every single person in your family using remote methods, just using a remote unit, a boost unit, uh, an XM generator or generator X connected to your computer. That is pretty amazing, but the lid has to close. Some people will write onto each uh, little DNA sample who it belongs to, maybe even the, the date it was put in as well. 
so you can get a feeling as to how much benefit is providing you with and whether the effect is um, tailing off during that time period. And you let's say you need a new sample so you can get a stronger signal. Then that's, this is just an illustration of my cheap little laptop, which I use occasionally for Spooky, with its USB connected to the so the frequency generator is connected via this USB connector here. And that's pretty much done. Now, when we're coming on to the actual software side of things, because we have the hardware set up, which we have to you know, think about and plan and work out. And then we have the software, which is where the instructions go to the frequency generator to give the frequencies to the, in this particular example, the boost, uh, the boost unit with the remote connected to it. And what we've got on screen right now is uh, an image of the software. You can see I've done a little highlight around the word presets at the top and at the bottom around shell empty presets. Now, the word shell confuses newcomers to Spooky2 and to Rifing. Okay. It confuses people because we've never heard the word shell being used in this context before. It seems to come from the history of rifing, whereby various practitioners decided to create a, a word which refers to something which defines the amplitude and the waveform for various different forms of application. So in your Spooky2 software, what you'll see when you click on that is different options. And the options here are on the right-hand side of the screen. Okay, contact, plasma, remote, or scalar, as well as foot bath, spooky to audio, coil, and cold laser. But we are only thinking about remotes here, so I've highlighted that. If you look to the top of the screen, where we've got the word presets, and you look just underneath it, you will see the, the, essentially the path. There's a right slash followed by the word shell empty presets. So in order to get to where we are now, we've gone to shell empty presets. And then we're going to click on the word remote. And then we get this mass of options. Now, one of the reasons we've got so many different options for different ways of doing remotes is because we've got different types of frequency sets that need to be are dealt with in different ways. We have uh, DNA, because there's frequencies which deal directly with the DNA of pathogen. There's MW, or molecular weight, at the bottom. MW emulates and MW remove. That stands for molecular weight, and therefore that deals with the frequencies of substances which are also within the database. And of course, there's healing and killing, which is what we use for um, traditional rife frequency sets, as well as our biofeedback and a few others to experiment with as well. A lot of this is experimental, and you'll have to see it as being experimental and learn from your experiences as you carry on your healing part. But to the most parts, the ones I tend to use is um, healing or killing, occasionally universal square H-bomb. And of course, when I'm doing DNA or MW, molecular weights, I would choose the relevant shells for that. But for the moment, we'll just think about clicking on healing because when we're talking about a frequency set, which you have found in the database, or alternatively one which you have created as a result of your biofeedback, you probably might think to yourself, I'm not sure if this should be doing healing or killing. But if you put it through the healing shell anyway, it will be uh, easier on the body and it will still do pathogen killing because it is the frequency which does the killing more than the shell, but the shell makes it a little bit more targeted to the particular function. So what we would do is we go on to shell empty presets, then we go on to remotes, then we'll choose healing RJW. Okay, so there's like a flow chart of different options for you as you go through the process of choosing what, what you're doing. You know, choosing, we're gonna do a healing work, we're gonna do it with the remotes. So we're gonna choose empty, uh, shell empty presets, we're gonna choose remotes, and then we're gonna choose the healing. Okay, does that make sense? Let's go back to getting, whoops, more into the definition of shells. This is basically what I've just, essentially what I've just told you, all right? It's the frequency which does the work, the frequency does the healing, the frequency does the killing, but choosing, the, choosing a good shell will make it more easy to get the result that you're after. So for this example, I have chosen to use Candida 1, Candida 2, Candida 3, and Candida 4. What I do after I've done my search in the Programs tab is I then just double-click on each one 
until they've appeared in the loaded programs box below, right? When it's inside the loading loaded programs box, I can use uh, the blue arrows and I can move them and I can change the order that these frequency sets are run if I wish. Does that make sense? Is that clear? All right, if, if, if any of this is rather unclear, then let us know in the chat box or in the Q&A box and we'll try and help you out. So there's me uh, looking at the loaded programs box. I've clicked on one of them uh, just to the point whereby it's highlighted in blue. If you double click on a frequency set in the loaded programs box, it will disappear. If you click on it once until it's highlighted in blue, you can then use the blue arrows to the right hand side of the loaded programs box to move them up and down to change the order of them. So that makes it, uh, that gives you more control over how you're going to be receiving your therapy via remote. Now, if you just done like a whole chain of them, like I have done with the Candida, then you can click on remove duplicate frequencies, which is at the bottom of the programs page. And in doing so, that can then lower, that can shorten the duration of your chain that you've created. If there are duplicate frequencies there, I know there are between the Candida one, two, three, and four, because that's what I do. And it shortens it great for um, both contact and remote mode. But sometimes you, you might not have that, but I tend to click on remove duplicate frequencies anyway. So I know what I'm getting. Now, a little bit of uh, feedback about harmonic wobbles here, a little bit more thinking about it. If you're concerned about the pathogens escaping the precise frequency or mutating, you can then add the harmonic wobbles. And I tend to do uh, feathering when trying to tackle microbes such as yeast, mold, spores, funguses, bacteria. Uh, and I tend to focus on uh, wobbles, which is when the frequency steps rather than rather than just rather than just feathering it's it's basically wobbling <laughs> it's, it's difficult to put it into words but instead of there being an oscillation like a sine wave around the precise frequency number which is what feathering would do what you would get with wobbles is something much more sharp and staccato movements which i don't think that larger pathogens can escape from so you add that in your settings window to make it more likely that these things won't carry on growing back and you will be able to have some control over them. And in the final stage, okay, it's when, when you're finally on the control panel, that's when you're gonna start the thing running. You've clicked on the control page, then you click the overwrite generator box, then click on the generator itself, which is one of these colored little boxes beneath the overwrite generator words. And then all you have to do is click start. And then, that's it, set and forget, all right? If you can just leave that running, you can go out and have a nice dinner with someone, you can watch TV, go for a bike ride, do whatever it is you want to do away from the computer and still with the knowledge of still getting some benefit from this thing, okay? Most Spooky2 users who use remotes have at least two remote generators running. This has its importance. One, to perform the pathogen control function and another to perform detox functions. One, therefore, is for your killing, and the other one, therefore, is for the detox process to try and get all the remaining rubbish from the killing outside of the body so that your body is healthier. Okay, I, I'd set up three remotes when I wrote this presentation, but I've also had as many as eight running at the same time where my health was even more concerning. Alongside my general alternative health way of life, I attribute the use of Spooky2 with all of its modes with a substantial increase in my well-being. And this is, as far as I'm concerned, a fact. Okay, an objective fact, because that connects with my experience. Other people would, might disagree. That's fine. I'll leave it up to them. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, therefore I'm just giving my opinion based upon experience. And, and I love it. And that's one of the reasons why I'm here today because I've got lots of benefit from this stuff. Now we got the other issue. And that is, what if you got some results from biofeedback, whether it's biofeedback on your generator X or whether it's biofeedback using the pulse units and the XM generator? 
Usually, if a person treats with contact or plasma mode, they will then, once the contact or plasma session is over, run the same frequency sets on a remote, just as we've described, so as to increase the quantity of treatment time, and thus we can say the results. This is another reason why remote mode is such an important addition to the Spooky 2 Armory against sickness. I don't think, I, I don't think that that's like um, a glib statement. I think that's an important statement, and I think it's a statement which you need to take to heart. Okay, that's just my opinion. Now I'll have a quick talk about presets. We've had a look at programs and how to set them up and how to run them. What about the presets? We've got loads of presets, existing frequency sets, which have already been uh, set up so that they're easy, to, easy and quick to run. Some of these are related to the main protocols we have within the software, such as Cancer and Morgellons and Lime. But there are plenty of other fun ones in the software too. Have a quick look when you're able to, when you're at home, using your free of charge Spooky2 software and have a look in the miscellaneous folder because that's got lots of fun things for remotes and contacts and plasma. And also some of those are quite useful sets. So I've used some of them myself earlier on in my healing phase. Right, so now what I'm going to demonstrate to you in this presentation is the running using the miscellaneous folder content by way of an example. So, firstly, click on miscellaneous. And the second stage of like your, your proverbial flowchart here is to choose your method of delivery, which would either be coil, contact, plasma, or remote, or speaker. All right. The AR presets, that's another useful selection there, which you can use. Bark flowers, you can use that too. I think that's on remote as well. Uh, DH experimental frequencies will have some you can use on remote too. Yeah, but there are some just underneath the remote uh, option within the miscellaneous folder there. And there's lots, okay? There's lots of fun things there. Take some time to get familiar with them, okay? You never know when they may come in handy taking into account any direction that your health or well-being might go. For instance, you might be thinking about the control of, let's say, candida, but um, let's say six months down the line, you could pick up an ear infection. Then you think, OK, I'll do everything the doctor tells me. But I'll also use the ear infection selection from the presets uh, within Spooky 2 and see whether I can generate more you know, well-being for myself there. So in this example, anyway, I'm just going to choose broad spectrum antibiotic. Uh, which has proven very useful in my earlier days when attempting to control my infection. Once you've selected it and it's highlighted in blue, unless you want to add feathers or wobbles, you just go straight to the control page. Okay, because normally you'd start off on presets and choose your shell, then you go to programs, then you go to settings, then you go to control. With the presets, you can just select your preset and then go straight to the control page. So they're very quick, very easy, very easy accessible. Once you're in the control tab, do, do the same process you do on the control page. You click overwrite, you click your generator, you then click the start button. And that's that. Okay, quite easy, quite quick. I know that when you open up the Spooky2 software for the first time after thinking, yeah, man, I can do this, I can do this, you look at the software and you think, oh, no, I can't do it. But now, hopefully, you can see that there's just a few steps you've got to go through. And once you've, once you've done it a few times, it'll become automatic for you and it'll become really easy to select your frequency sets and your presets and your biofeedback results and to run them on remote contact plasma or whatever it is you desire. Okay, it's, it, 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 it's, it's good. You, you get into um, the routine of this is what I have to do when I'm trying to run a program or trying to run a preset. And it, after a while, it just flow. Right, you can also use the remotes to assist in the control of environmental issues such as ants and fleas, which sounds peculiar, but the remote is actually quite a powerful uh, tool. 
And you can take a dead insect. Let's say there's a, an ant's nest in your garden and you don't want it there. You can take a dead insect from that, um, wrap it in paper tape, shove it in the remote, and then run the frequency set called Spectrum Sweep over it. And just leave that running for a long time and change your bugs out every couple of days, maybe. And then the populations of those little critters will go down. All right, there's plenty of like anecdotal experiences of people saying, oh, this is what I did, this is how I did it, and hey presto, I don't have fleas anymore, or hey presto, I don't have an ant infestation anymore, or hey presto, I reduced some of the midges or, or flying insects around here. So it's awesome. But this is something which has an effect upon life, and therefore there are some precautions. What you don't do is use remotes on children under seven years of age because they need their beneficial bacteria to help their immune systems. So reducing the useful bacteria as a result of your remote sessions could be a little harmful. I suppose maybe in some cases you may want to risk it, but sometimes you just don't want to, okay? As there is very little science out there on how remotes might affect the health of a pregnancy, it would be advisable that pregnant women probably don't use remotes. Okay, use, you know, use your wisdom there, but also think about the health of the child and the immune system that the child needs to, be, needs to have as well, and also the beneficial bacteria that, that the newborn child needs to have. Pathogen killing effects of the remotes can also create very real Herxheimer reactions. Now, a Herxheimer reaction is roughly defined as feeling worse before you get better, or it is the product of killing something off inside you, let's say some fungus, and the, um, anything that was inside the fungus is now broken open and is now swimming around your bloodstream, so uh, thus making you ill. I've had a few brutal Herxheimer reactions um, in the past. So drink plenty of water, take breaks when you need to, and then get straight back in the saddle and keep up the fight against your illness. And also make sure that your Windows-based computer, which is what we run these, uh, this software on, is set that it doesn't go to sleep when, it's, when it gets bored. <laughs> okay? You know what I mean. You know the settings on your little laptop. All right. I think that's pretty much it for now. And I will leave the presentation and let you get on with your own healing journey. Good luck, God bless, and speak to you again soon.